good morning children welcome back to biology class i hope you all are safe and healthy children right now you are sitting and looking at this video now observe that there are so many other processes which are also going on simultaneously in your body like respiration processing the information which you are getting food which you had is also getting digested circulation of blood is going on all these functions are carried out by specialized organs and they all are interrelated and interdependent there is coordination between these organ systems because of which they can function smoothly now let's see what is this coordination coordination is defined as the interaction and interrelation between the various activities in the body of a living being that takes place internally as well as externally coordination can be of two types nervous coordination and chemical coordination now let's see the following video to understand what is nervous coordination singing thinking dreaming tasting breathing running moving feeling pain painting writing we cannot do any of these things without our body's nervous system we know that the nervous system comprises of the brain spinal cord and a huge network of nerves that are spread throughout the body the nervous system is responsible for sending receiving and processing messages in the form of chemical signals called impulses the main function of the nervous system is to control and coordinate voluntary activities like reading and walking and involuntary activities like our heartbeat and breathing also the brain uses the information it receives from the nerves to control and coordinate all our actions and reactions the nervous coordination the coordination of the nerves and the brain is the part of the nervous coordination this is highly specialized and involves reactions from simple to complex actions and also to internal and external stimuli the actions of the body could be voluntary or reflex the basic working unit of the nervous system is neuron it is a specialized cell designed to transmit information to other nerve cells muscles or gland cells so let's see what is a neuron how it looks like what is its structure neurons or nerve cells are the smallest structural and functional unit of the nervous system each neuron consists of the main cell body called cyton which contains nucleus and other cell organelles various finger like extensions called dendrons and dendrites arise from the cell body one of these processes become long like a wire and is known as exon or nerve fiber this exon is covered by a protective fatty covering called the myelin sheath exon further divides into various small branches called exon terminals each ending into a bulb like structure called synapse or synaptic bulb the neuron is a very fascinating and vital portion of the nervous system because it allows the nervous system to communicate with the rest of the body the structure of the neuron offers key features to help it transmit messages across relatively long distances to begin the neuron has a cell body which is also known as a soma and which houses the cell nucleus next are the dendrites which are tree-like branches that extend off of the soma these are used by the neuron to detect both chemical and electrical stimuli in the center of the neuron is the axon the axon is the longest extension from the soma and can be up to a meter in length it serves as the primary communication pipeline from one end of the neuron to the other the axon hillock is the junction that connects the axon to the cell body covering the axon are myelin sheaths 
Myelin sheaths are sections of fatty tissue that help to protect the axon and also help to speed up signal conduction along the axon. The gaps between myelin sheaths are called the nodes of Ranvier. These also aid in signal conduction and they also allow nutrients and waste to enter and leave the axon. Finally, at the end of the axon are extensions that branch off to form several axon terminals. Now you know the structure of the neuron, so let's see how the messages are transmitted. When messages are transmitted from the organs, they are received by the dendrites and passed on to the cell body and then to the exon. The exon then transmits the messages to the dendrites of another neuron which lies in the close proximity. Each branch of a neuron ends into a bulb-like structure called synapse or synaptic bulb. This bulb contains neurochemicals or neurotransmitters. The messages are transmitted from the exon of one neuron to the dendrite of another neuron via this synapse. Neurons communicate with each other, relaying messages throughout your body and powering all of your thoughts and actions. Neurons talk to each other using both electrical and chemical signals. Messages start as electrical signals traveling rapidly down a neuron. These signals are called action potentials. When they reach the gap between two neurons, the messages need some help to get across. The information is transformed from an action potential into a chemical message, which crosses the gap called a synapse. The release of those chemical messengers can trigger an action potential in the neuron on the other side of the synapse, conveying the message onward. Or it can quiet the message. This happens over and over and over. And with repeated activity, the synapse gets stronger, so the next message is more likely to get through. That way, neurons learn to pass on important messages and ignore the rest. This is how our brains learn and adapt to an ever-changing world. Very commonly, we use the word nerve. Are nerves and neurons same? No. Let's see what is the difference. A neuron is just one cell, whereas a nerve is a bundle of exons from many neurons wrapped up in multiple layers of connective tissue, an elongated sheath or casing. Nerves act as information highways to carry signals between the brain, spinal cord and rest of the body. The sheath or casing over the exon carries out the function of insulation since it prevents the mixing of impulses that may be transmitted in adjacent fibers. Nerves are of three kinds. Number one, sensory nerves. These contain sensory fibers that carry impulses from the sense organs to the brain or spinal cord. Second, motor nerves. These contain motor fibers that carry impulses to the muscles or glands from the brain or the spinal cord. And third are the mixed nerves. These contain both sensory as well as motor fibers. So children, this was the structure of neuron and its types. I would like all of you to practice the diagram of the structure of neuron and we will be discussing rest of the parts of the nervous system in the next class. Thank you and take care.